everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and I talk a lot about Salesforce. Today we're going to be going over the Salesforce Certified Business Analyst exam guide and kind of talking a lot about the exam, what the exam was like for me, um, how you can study for it and pass this exam. I took this exam about a month ago so it's still pretty fresh in my mind and I kind of want to put some details in there for you so then this exam is a lot easier for you to uh, to study for, kind of read between the lines for you. So this is the newest, one of the newest Salesforce certifications. This was as of, I think, July of 2022. So it's fairly new. We haven't had any new releases for this exam. So let's go ahead and jump into this. This is Let's start off with the audience description. So the business analyst typically has two years of BA experience, including owning and delivering business process improvements, as well as two years of Salesforce platform experience. Personally, I do not have two years of business analyst experience. Uh, you don't need to have this to pass the exam. However, I do have experience working as a business analyst in some aspects, just not as my title. So working in Salesforce and gathering requirements from stakeholders and then being able to deliver those requirements in a solution. Um, let's keep going down. These things that I'm about to talk about, like the knowledge and skills and abilities, these are all going to be tested on even though they're not specifically inside of a uh, section within the exam guide. So just just keep that in mind. I mean, it's kind of talked about, but it doesn't necessarily fit within any section. So first is going to be knowledge. You want to know the implementation lifecycle, the best practices for different Salesforce environments, talk about different industry environments, and understand elicitation and documentation techniques. So a lot of this is going to be understand what solutions could possibly be used to deliver the solution that your customer or your client is looking for, as well as how to document that and deliver a process within an implementation life cycle. Then you will look at skills. Uh, you can plan discovery activities. So planning how to take those requirements or get the requirements out of the specific stakeholders. You can map business processes and elicit requirements. You can uh, just demonstrate that you have effective communication when you're working with different stakeholders and then strong problem solving skills. Then you have abilities, which are a wide array of different things, um, communication styles to maximize impact, uh, be trusted advisor of key stakeholders, break down uh, complex business processes into manageable steps and evaluate different Salesforce features as a part of a, fe a features design. So for example, if your customer wanted a way to have customers have a portal and interact with your company, then experiences might be the right way to go, but you'll need to work that out with your stakeholders as far as if it's going to work for what they want, as well as with the developers and the configurators that you'll be working with. And then you will also need to be good at setting different priorities um, and just essentially making sure the project stays on track and it's your job to deliver the project. Uh, a business analyst often takes on the same roles that a project manager would, just in a different type of delivering environment. Whereas a project manager might be waterfall environments, the business analyst is more for the agile environments. Um, and then, you are not expected to know or uh, do the following, which is change management. However, you should understand some of the different tools that you need to. Um, managing the project, even though a lot of the exam is not managing the project, some of these don't make sense. Um, building ROI, developing custom code, you don't need to know how to code, it's a nice to have. Um, ongoing administration of tools, so once the project is delivered, you don't necessarily need to know that for the exam and then legal and compliance issues. The typical job roles of a certified business analyst may include the following of these uh, different job titles. So being a business analyst can be a part of being an admin, um, a business operations specialist, a sales ops specialist. This is not on here, but that is, that is it. So now let's talk about the actual exam. This 
exam and what I've seen in different circles within Salesforce is that this exam shows hiring managers and recruiters that you know how to work with stakeholders, you know how to deliver a project, you know how to gather requirements and do that. And it may not necessarily give you a business analyst job title. However, it will help you in gaining a job where you can work as a functional business analyst. So this exam is going to be 60 multiple choice, multiple select questions with a possibility of five non-scored questions. Personally, it's about 50-50 for me whether or not I've had those five non-scored questions. Half the time I have, half the time I haven't. For my husband, Jeremy, who's taken way more Salesforce exams than I have, he has always had those five non-scored questions. And then you have 105 minutes, which is an hour and 45 minutes to pass the exam. And that also includes the unscored questions. The unscored questions are going to be baked into the exam. So be sure even with those last five to do your best on all the questions. One thing about the exam is that most exams are choose one out of four or choose three out of five or two out of five or true false. This exam has um, a consistency of all the questions where it's a choose one out of three questions. However, the questions on the exam are very, very lengthy story questions. There were hardly any uh, statement true false questions. And then you have a passing score of 72%. The registration fee is $200 plus applicable taxes and the retake fee is 100. There are places that you can get some exam codes to help uh, reduce the cost of the initial fee. Um, you can do this on site at a testing center or online. Personally, I liked online the best because I can have a blanket and wear my comfy clothes. You know hard references during the exam. You must be a, a certified admin to take this exam. All right, and then there are a few different things that you can use for preparation. There is a trail mix and a module. Um, I took the whole trail mix and there were things missing. And I took the module and there were things missing um, that were on the exam that were tested on that were not in this trail mix. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is that I have a course that I've made with my husband that we should be releasing the video soon, but currently as of recording this video, um, we have a full glossary of all the terms that you need to know with links to those and we have a full practice exam that's over on salesforceupskill.com. Within the next two to three months, we should have all the videos ready. So I'm currently recording this at the end of November of 2022 by January, the end of January, we hope to have those up. All right, let's go to the exam outline. So customer discovery at 17%. This is going to be a lot of talking with stakeholders, talking about what they want their solution to be like and how to take that discovery and do the different documents that you need to do to essentially figure out what they act, the customer actually wants. Because a lot of business analysts know that what your customer says that they want it's not actually what they want. And so you have to uh, do a lot of discovery and really ask some deep, hard hitting questions. You'll need to determine business strategies, goals, and initiatives and challenges to define the scope and make sure that the scope stays consistent throughout the whole process once you have established that and move out of discovery phase. Then you need to um, understand the current state of their Salesforce environment. And then you'll want to determine what their future state is, and then hopefully try and create that gap analysis document of between current state and future state of what you need to accomplish. And then you'll need to understand the different phases of the implementation lifecycle, do planning for the implementation lifecycle, um, understand the customer's environment, and identify opportunities and constraints, and then understand Salesforce and be able to recommend things to your customer. All right, that is going to be at 17%. Then we have collaboration with stakeholders at 24%. This is going to be the biggest section. You will plan discovery activities. You will um, identify key stakeholders between there. You will, given a scenario, choose the most effective technique of listing business requirements. Now, a lot of this is going to overlap with the other sections. So there might be one question that you think belongs in another section. But again, this just all really overlaps. You are going to need to determine what priorities to obtain sign off from stakeholders, do a go or no go decision, um, explain how to move from a current state to that future state that we talked about in discovery 
um, and understand the best practices for the Salesforce um, solution and impacts to business process. Uh, a lot of this, you might see a scenario of this project is kind of going off track. How are we able to get it back on track? How are we able to mitigate some issues? Or what type of analysis to do to get to where we want to go? All right, and then you'll see business process mapping at 16%. You will demonstrate how to define the scope of the process and break it down into different steps. Um, apply understanding of a hierarchical process map. Analyze the different documents that you'll see and elicit requirements um, that might not be on those documents to establish a future state and apply governance on future state. Now this section is very, very uh, business process mapping heavy, of course, because that's the, the name of it. But if you know the different process maps and you understand when and where to use them, then you'll pass this, this section very, very well. Um, and I mean, that's with the whole thing. As long as you know the definition of a lot of the terms that they're throwing out and you understand the basics of when to use them, then this exam is going to be fairly easy for you. All right, let's go ahead and go on to requirements at 17%. Um, distinguish requirements versus user stories. Um, this is one that you really want to hone in on. Verify and prioritize existing requirements and identify new requirements to develop the future state. Document requirements in a version controlled repository like Git uh, to manage scope. That's also pretty important. So again, just understand how to go from discovery, taking those requirements down, and then eventually making those into user stories and prioritize which requirements are going to be within scope or without scope and making sure that you protect those requirements as well with a version controlled repository. All right, let's go ahead and go on to user stories at 18%. Understand the components of a user story to perform a thorough analysis. Contrast the difference between acceptance criteria and definition of done. Document user stories in a version controlled repository to manage scope. So you'll want to know the structure of a user story and make sure that the user stories that they present you um, are correct or that you can point out where they could be improved. All right, then you have user acceptance at 8%. Define and prepare the user acceptance test plan to confirm the solution, uh, to guide UAT and manage the results to determine whether a solution meets the requirements, given a scenario, make a go or no go decision. So user acceptance testing is going to be showing them the product that you built and testing it to make sure it meets their liking. There might be requirements that were missed or maybe requirements that pop up at the last minute in user acceptance testing that they decided that they wanted. But essentially, you're going to make sure that user acceptance testing stays on track and that the go or no go decision is made, as well as if it can be deployed into use and if there are any straggling um, requirements that you might need to add in a different, in a different uh, sprint. All right, and that is the exam outline as far as the business analyst exam goes. Again, understand a lot of the vocabulary. Know when it's gonna be used. Use your common sense and this exam will be a breeze for you. All right, then you have exam code of contact. Again, uh, don't give out answers. Don't try and get help by using dumps. Dumps are not good to use and oftentimes they are wrong so please don't use them do not give any super badge solutions do not give it any exam questions out to the community that's going to result in a lot of your certifications being taken away so again just be good don't give out any questions and that's that and then there are currently no new product releases or updates for the business analyst exam because this is so new of an exam, but just keep an eye out for it whenever you're looking at your other certifications. But that is going to be the outline of the exam. Again, use your common sense, understand the vocabulary that you will see on the exam and know when to use the different business process maps, know when to use different techniques um, in gaining requirements or working with stakeholders. And this should be fairly easy. Again, we do have a course going over this that should be very complete soon, but we have a soft launch for it. Now, I'll leave that in the description down below as well as where you can go to find maybe coupon codes for your exams so then it is not as much of a financial burden for you. 
But anyways, thank you so much for joining me. If you found this helpful, be sure to give it a like, subscribe, um, check out the links down in the description. You can find me on LinkedIn and Twitter. I'd love to join you over there. Hope you have a good one.